Hi there folks, welcome back to the IB and Andy Fishing Channel. I hope you're doing really well. Uh, just before we get started with this one today, a huge thank you to those of you who tuned into the last video where I went and caught my first barbel on float fishing kit. It's one thing me coming out and doing stuff like I'm going to do today where I sort of feel like I know what I'm doing. It's another thing putting out a video where I, I literally don't know what I'm doing. I was a little bit nervous about putting that one out there, but thank you very much to everyone who not only watched, but those of you who got in contact through the comments section or private messaged me and said, look, yeah, try this, try that really really nice to have a little community here where we can all sort of help each other with the fishing that's been really cool so thank you very much but we're back inside the comfort zone slightly today uh, it's been a horrific october here in derbyshire in fact over most of the country for terrible weather we've had some really really bad flooding in the last week or 10 days i mean really really bad and to be honest i'm a little bit shocked that we're here today at all but I'm down on my local stretch of the river dove today to fish a stretch of river that has just come down into a sort of fishable height and color as I say, really, really bad floods. And it never used to drop out this quickly. I'm sure this has changed. It used to be if we had a really bad flood, it could be two weeks before it was fishable. This hasn't even been a week and actually it looks absolutely fine. I think we should do okay today. I always like to come and do a session after a big flood. It sounds daft, but just to make sure the fish is still there, to have a look at the river, what's changed, which trees have gone, which gravel's moved. Obviously it gives me a bit of a picture for when I'm bringing guiding clients down here. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I haven't got long, I've got maximum maybe two and a half hours. I've got to get back and do some stuff. My accountant's told me I've got some paperwork to do. What? So a couple of hours, maybe three if I really, really push it. I've brought down a couple of rods, 10 foot three weight urine infant rod with our urine infant box kit and a 10 foot three weight indicator fishing rod to fish the slower water with. It's my usual two rigs for this time of year in high water. I'm going to have a bit of a play around, explore the area, explore all my favourite spots, make sure the fish are still there, see if anything new has appeared, see which trees have gone and just have a good scout around really. It is a miserable day here in Derbyshire. It's misty, it's mizzly, it's gray, it's dark, it's dreary. It's actually half past 11 now and it is so dark. It's one of those days where I don't think the sun's ever gonna really come out. So not ideal conditions, but with some bright flies and by fishing the right spots, I'm hoping we can put a few grayling in the net for the start of the season for me. Let's go and have a look. First pool of the day and I am always inclined to look for slower water when river levels are high. Uh, obviously as it gets higher, the power of the river increases and it's hard for those fish to sit in the fast stuff. They're more likely to move into the slower areas of the river. So that's what I've done to start is I've put myself in a nice slow gravelly area, nice clean gravel after that big flood. I'm gonna work right the way from the inside edge across here. Two fly rig to start with on this urine infant leader. I've got a pink collar pheasant tail on the point and I've got a baby pink haddis on the top dropper. And that is getting down nicely. It's a little bit awkward here. I've got a big tree behind me which is making casting any distance difficult, but we'll get there. We're just gonna really concentrate on this inside line first. I haven't got all day here, as I say, so I'm gonna fish relatively quickly, but I do think that the inside half of this piece of water is gonna be the one. Taking loads of care with these trees around me. Making sure I don't hit anything. Obviously, short session like this, last thing you want to do is have to re-rig stuff and get yourself out of tangles. So nice, low maintenance fishing. That's the first take of the day. That's a grayling. That's not taken long and that's on that nice gravelly stuff I was talking about. Let's get you back up here, buddy. And I've just realized I said that I had a pink hotspot pheasant tail on the point. I haven't at all. I've got a red tag. I've got the soft red tag on. That's a nice start. That's maybe a dozen casts. So it turns out I didn't need to worry. The grayling are still in here, even if they're a bit slippy. <laughs> we'll get another one. Let's try that again. So that was a touch further over than some of the previous casts. And actually, right at my feet as well. It never ceases to amaze me just how close to you you'll pick up grayling always a relief to know they're still there after a big flood event like the one we've had they were always going to still be here and they probably always will be here oh there's another one on the hang that time just about on the swing another grayling always like to try and have a look downstream of me especially on nice clean gravel because i'll be kicking food up when i unhook that last fish that'll have been food stirred up off the bottom. Grayling do like to come and sit below you. That's on the top dropper this time. That's on the baby pink. Similar size fish. Peas in a pod, these. 
Let that baby pink out. Will you sit still for a second? You, <laughs> I guess the answer to that is no. Back you go, chap. Thank you very much. Yeah, never underestimate just letting them swing and hang every now and again. Grayling do like to take that fly just as it sort of starts to rise up on the swing and then again just as it stops on the hang. Always a key time, so as much as this is an upstream technique, never right off that water below you. So it looks like our hunch was possibly right about these fish having just backed off that main feed line. It'd be so easy just to go marching across here straight into that juicy stuff over in that kind of far third, second half of the river. But picked up a couple of fish there in the first couple of minutes. We're gonna have a good search around here anyway. I'll give this pool another 15, 20 minutes or so now. So yeah, definitely fish down the inside to start with. Okay, so first fly to into the day in the first five minutes and I've put that baby pink on the point. It's got a three mil bead on it, that's relatively heavy. And I've put the orange collar hairs here above it. I took the red tag off, I just wanted a touch more weight. It's not going to wallop down, it's not a heavy, heavy rig. It's just going to get me down a little bit faster. There we go, right at my feet again. So these guys aren't shy today. Water's carrying a little tinge of colour, it's definitely not gin clear. And they are willing to come close. Nice stuff. Well, that's taken that orange collar hairs here so we'll call that a good fly change wow a little guy bees in a pod yeah so we'll stay on the inside line a wee bit longer then that's worked okay i can't say for absolutely certain that the change of fly pattern and weight has definitively made the difference there but picked up a fish pretty quickly yeah so once i go out towards the kind of middle third of the river here. I do lose contact with this rig a little bit. Certainly don't feel like I'm getting down to the bottom. Okay, so yeah, change made. Uh, I've switched to a three fly rig. The two droppers have stayed the same. They're the two flies that I just had on. But I've put a 3.8 mil soft pink tag on the point, which is just gonna get me down in that slightly deeper water as we go across here. It does drop off pretty quick, this one. That's definitely down far, far more efficiently than it was before the change so yeah. Ooh, was there? <laughs> actually I don't think that was a fish I think that was a bit of leaf hitting the flies on the way through definitely getting me down faster so we'll give this a bit more of a going over three fish in the first 10 minutes is a good start so if we don't get too many more out of here it's not the end of the world no, it's not quite happened just yet it might be that my my hunch was right and maybe they aren't over in this slightly heavier stuff. Getting down okay, feel like the rig's fishing all right. The visibility on the indicator's okay, it's not brilliant because of that flat light, but, oh, <laughs> there you go. Taught one into existence there, haven't I? Actually, feels like a pretty good fish as well. Took a little bit longer than I thought it would do, that's for sure. So yeah, might be a slightly better one, this. It's just not that dragged down a touch. Maybe that's it, maybe the bigger fish. Oh, it's a trout. <laughs> ah, sort of forgot about the idea of trout. Just for a moment there, I thought there was only grayling in this river, but that is definitely, definitely the wrong species. You guys are supposed to have packed up by now. You should be doing other stuff. Uh, actually, you might not be doing other stuff because you definitely aren't wild. Pain in the backside. Okay, wrong species, but it sort of reassure me that I'm not getting everything completely wrong here. I did a good five minutes there on this free fly rig without a touch until that. I'm gonna give this ball another five minutes, but if it doesn't happen, I've probably spent 15, 20 minutes in here now and I wanna cover a bit of water, so maybe I'll work across a bit further, cover a bit more ground. But if it doesn't happen in the next five minutes, I think we'll go and find another spot.
Yeah, nice start, happy with that one. Free grading and trout in the first 20 will do me absolutely fine. So I've had a bit of a walk upstream uh, and just the scale of the fastness of the flooding is incredible. Areas of field that I don't think I've ever seen underwater before have clearly been completely dunked. So much water came down this system, it was staggering. And it has moved things around a little bit, including that big log above us, which is pushing water down the middle of the river that didn't used to come this way. It's always been a favourite grayling spot of mine, this, but with this pace down the middle, I'm not sure if it's the one. However, that little scour on the far side now looks really fishy. So that's what we're going to hit first here, is that slightly slower water going towards the far bank here. There's a fish. That didn't take long. Oh, it's another bloody trout. Dang it, plays pretty hard. See if I can get this fall off. Will you come off? No, it doesn't look like it. Ooh, let's try and play you back up through my lee here. There we go. Took that baby pink again. It's definitely not just a grayling fly. But right now, I wish it was. Okay, so I wasn't completely wrong about that. There was a fish over there. It's just do with a, a slight change in species, that's all. Eee, there we go. That's from exactly the same place as that trout. That's interesting. All right, we'll try and do the same thing again and playing up my, playing up my lee. That one is a grayling. Really fast water. There is no good place to play this fish, really. It's getting skating like that. It's probably the best way of getting this fish close to him, actually, is just to keep him out of the water a bit. Yay, there we go. The right species. Slightly bigger than the first ones. We're working our way up. You know, that seam up here is enough to make me think that I might just move myself and the other camera upstream a little bit it's a lovely little pocket of fairly slow moving water i know it's over nice fine gravel that water above me looks absolute money at the moment and it's not too fast yeah i reckon this is worth a little dangle it's kind of the, the middle third maybe even the third quarter here is the bit that i've come up to fish i'm going to fish the water in front of me first so I don't walk over anything on my way across but just as you get not quite to the trees but almost as fast to the far side as the trees are it's just a slower pocket of water there it's lovely and mulchy oh there's a fish it's lovely and mulchy that's another bloody trout it's lovely and mulchy and it's got all the good stuff and that was the best thing that could have happened is come off and I'm not stuck in the tree. Okay, we'll try this again and hope the next one is a bit more grailingy. Trying to avoid trout where possible. Just gonna fish my way across to that water I was talking about. I certainly haven't reached it yet. Oh, oh that was a grayling as well. That was a good one. Ah, bumped him off. Saw him. Saw him flash. Oh no. That's exactly the fish I was hoping to hook. That looked like a real nice one. Okay, he has got a buddy over there. He's not quite as big as oh it's another trout. Ah, uh, might have to move away from here in a minute. This is not what we wanted. The previous fish was definitely, definitely a grayling. I saw it. Come on, bud. Let's get you off. Obviously, the trout season has finished. These fish aren't spawning yet. I know that for absolutely certain. These fish tend not to spawn until at the very earliest, late November. So I'm not catching these fish off reds, but I'd rather not be catching them. I'm really frustrated about bumping that grayling off. It's a real good and saw it turn. Whee, there's a fish. What have we got? Okay, that's another trout. So I am at this, gonna move on. Can't keep catching brownies all day. Even though I think there are probably some grayling over there for me. I can't just keep catching brownies constantly. So 
we'll go and find another spot away from these guys. Leave them in peace. Okay, so that sort of can happen at this time of year and those trout are clearly sort of getting ready and starting to think about spawning. I will say I don't think any of those were mature spawning age fish, so not too much guilt, but by the by the time you catch the third one in a spot like that, it's probably time to move on. So that is exactly what I've done. I've moved upstream a little bit, had a little bit of a look at some more water. I've noticed actually there's a bit of a hatch started. Um, I have just seen a fish rise. Oh, and again, I assume that's a rise. It could be being chased by something actually that. There is a little hatch of an olive. I think it's a medium rather than a large dark. Um, we might see a few more rises. Haven't changed anything with the rig. Gonna stick with the three flies for the moment. I've got this lovely feed line with this very, very slow water inside of it. And I think there's gonna be grayling just on this side of that feed line. I have to say actually, it doesn't cast so far. I've barely touched the riverbed once. I might need a bit more weight here. Oh, there you go, there's the riverbed. <laughs> oh, surely not another trout. I know, that one is a grayling, jumping grayling. Something you don't see that often. Come on, bud. He's taken the point flea. He's taken that soft pink tag. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So it's the first time I've seen any contact with the riverbed and hooked a fish. Let's just ease that point fly out there. Thank you very much, buddy. A little bit washed out. Can get some food down you. Start to work my way up this one a little bit. I've had another dozen or so drifts there and I haven't picked up another one so we'll keep moving. There we go. Close to me again. Close to me again. It's a slightly better fish as well. I might try and put him on the reel. There we go. That's a bit more comfortable. I don't think it's a huge fish. Uh, it's a nice one. Yeah, nice stamped fish that. Come on, there we go, ah, that's slightly better. Okay, yeah, bit more of a handful of grading, not a, not a monster monster by any stretch, half pound maybe, but nice to get something a bit more significant into the net. Yeah, nice to put a slightly bigger fish in the net just to reassure myself. Uh, I'm certainly reassured that I'm looking in the right place here in terms of this slack. Pretty much all the takes in exactly the same line, I'd say that is about perfect. Just get the feeling here, there's a slightly deeper pocket that possibly didn't used to be here. I don't remember this dropping off quite so severely. You know. This is sort of the idea of coming out today, is finding these areas and seeing what's changed and where might be holding fish and where might not be. There's a fish. That's another one. Another slightly better one as well, I reckon. Similar size to the last one. Same line again. A couple of casts later. Same result. And actually, it might be the same fly as well. I think this is another top dropper fish. This is that orange collar hairs here. Uh, it might be a slightly bigger fish, actually, than the last one. Yeah, I'd say that is, actually. It might be a wee bit bigger. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. Now we're rocking. Yeah, a pool full of these would suit me down to the ground. Yeah, feels like we might be on something here. Uh, I've just checked the time. I can probably, I could probably stay for another hour. Well, it's not going to stay in this pool for the whole hour, but I've not got long left, really. I've got to crack on and do real life stuff. This has been worth coming just for this one little pocket here. Straight down the edge of this feed line, exactly where you'd expect them to be. So I didn't really want to change the rig, but I have just a bit of an experiment as much as anything. I've put the 4mm point fly on, just to see if that gets me down a bit faster. It's a nice dense fly that is, drops quickly, but it is a fish catcher as well. So just give it a go, see if it makes any difference through here at all. Five minutes since I had that last fish and I sort of feel like if I went through the process of fly changes and really worked hard on it 
I could probably catch a few more out of here. There's certainly plenty of fish in here, it seems like it. It's not really the point of today, it's more about exploring and finding stuff and working stuff out. And I feel like I already know something new about this pool. It gets a little bit deeper as we go up, but I don't feel out of the game here. Wouldn't be surprised if I had another one in the next minute or so. <laughs> I said in the next minute or so, maybe the next cast. Certainly not the not the record breaker, but it's going on my scoreboard. Tiny little grayling. Future of the river. Beautiful colouring. Yeah, and at that, I think I'm going to have a little move on, actually. Let's go and see if we can find some somewhere else. So while those floods can be a real pain and they keep you off the water for a while, one thing they do do is clean the riverbed up beautifully and now the sun is a little bit brighter the clouds just lifted slightly at the moment i can see the beautiful golden gravel on the riverbed and the fish love that stuff hoping that this water in front of me being quite similar to the last pool of fish will yield sort of similar results okay nice defined feed line and then slightly slacker water just this side of it and i'm assuming the fish are going to be exactly there just this side of that just this side of that feed line. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. Didn't take long in here either. Oh, that one's pulling back that way. What have we got here? I haven't actually seen this yet. Good turn of pace. Could be a trout. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's not the that's not the target species. Uh, nice clean gravel. I wonder if these guys are starting to think about spawning weed. Let's try and get this guy in as quickly as possible, get him back to his... or her. Are he or is she? We'll never know. This is a wild fish though. Baby pink, out the mouth, fish back in the water. Again, all you can really do with those guys is just get them back in the water as quickly as possible. So that one never actually left the water, it's just a question of of dealing with them as quickly and as efficiently as possible and letting them carry on their way. I don't think it does them any great harm. It is what it is. You can't really avoid it. If you're nymphing for grayling during the winter, you're going to pick up trout as bycatch. Just slip them back as quickly as you can. Let's just start to work across a bit. A little bit surprised to have not picked up a grayling out of here yet. A bit more of an explore. Again, that water over there is not too fast for grayling. No, nah, okay, that's not quite happened over there. I'm just going to come back towards my bank a little bit actually and fish the inside of this. Maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe they're, maybe they're a bit closer. That sun has properly come out now as well. It's beautiful. I wasn't expecting this today. Let's try it. That's not particularly deep there, so I'm going to have to work pretty hard to get this heavy rig through. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, it's another trout. <sighs> it's a pretty big fish as well. We could be playing this one for a while. I reckon he's just come to the inside to catch some rays just as that sun's popped out. A little bit of blue sky behind us as well. Just snuck over to the inside. Just as it's warmed up. Don't blame him. Three weeks ago that would have been an absolute prize. Wild or stocks, what are you? Ah, it might be wildy actually. It's a grand fish on that baby pink again. I think that is a wildy actually, yes. No, it's not so stocky, definitely a stocky. So he wasn't going to spawn anyway. Just brought myself upstream 15 yards, see if I can get myself away from these spotties. Real pain. As I say, I don't think these fish are anywhere near spawning yet. That one wasn't even going to be able to spawn but as much as you can do is just unhook them Ooh, as fast as you can that's a grayling unhook them as fast as you can get them back and move somewhere where there's a grayling in front of you just like that oh he came off so he was actually on the point fly he was on that four mil point fly which i know is oh there's a rise over there i know it's way too heavy but um it didn't matter there that's for sure let's see if he's got a friend there just in that little crease line There we go, there we go, there's another grey dog. 
don't think I need to put this one on the reel. No, she'll be okay at that. Don't particularly like playing fish off the line with these fine mono leaders, but it is what it is. Come on, buddy. He's on that baby pink again. Things lethal when the water's like this. So effective. Nice, 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 nice. That's what it's about. <laughs> Wriggly, flappy grayling on the nymphs. Oh, that's a bit further across the rent again, but it's in a good area. We'll fish that. There we go. There we go. That one we will get on the reel. Could just be because I hooked it from deeper, but that immediately felt like a slightly better fish. I'm not so sure now. Uh, I don't know. There have been many graylings today that have taken line, and I'm pretty sure this is a grayling, so this will be interesting. That's a freaking trout again. <laughs> these guys are so hard on the feed today. I mean, I'm not catching these out of spawning areas. That, that is right in the feed line there. Oh, I really thought that was a grayling. Ah, gosh, dang it. Again, hook out. Fish hasn't left the water. A little bit wrapped in the tippet. Off he goes. No great fanfare. Just slipping straight back. As I say, these aren't spawning fish. These are feeding fish. That is not a red over there. That's right over towards the feed line. They're clearly hard on it after that flooding. Oh, there's a fish. Just threw that one a bit further upstream on the inside. What have we got? It's another trout. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Again, it's not, a, it's not a mature fish. It's not a spawning age fish, but I sort of wish they weren't trout at all. Okay, so one last spot I reckon. Uh, actually, the, the nice bright sun that had popped out has sort of gone as quickly as it appeared. And I think there's some rain coming up the valley and that coupled with the fact that I'm running out of time anyway means that this will be the last spot of the day, I reckon. If I can just winkle a couple more grayling out of here, I'd be a very, very happy guy with how this has gone. I haven't changed the rig. I've been perhaps a little bit lazy today in terms of flies and rigging. So it's never really felt like it's that far wrong and you just get away with more weight on that point fly when the gravel's as clean as it is at the moment. So just didn't feel like I needed to change lots. If anything, I've probably gone a little bit lighter at times, but it hasn't really mattered. It's interesting how much colder the air is all of a sudden. As I say, there is definitely something coming up the valley. It's completely changed the feel of the day within 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Lost a bit of air temperature, lost a little bit of light. That hatch has definitely stopped. There the fish. What have we got this time? Please be a grayling. What are you? That's another brownie. These guys are absolutely munching everything today. I sort of hoped with this slightly slower water on the inside, it'd be more grayling. -y. Certainly the bulk of the grayling today seems to have come from slower water. Oh, there's a the fish. Is it the right species this time? I think that was a grayling. <laughs> Bloody hope it's a grayling. Got the inside that time. What are you? Please be the right species. Ah, it is a grayling. There we go, on the point fly. On that four milli. Right, let's get you in the net. And I reckon that will do me for today. Very nice. Hook fell out in the net, which is always the best sort of news. Oh, the fish fell out of my hands. Go on, buddy. Don't get me wrong, I would love to keep fishing here because actually this has fished really well. I'm just coming up to about two hours on the water. I've got no idea how many fish I've caught. I've really, really gutted to lose that big grayling earlier, the one I bumped off, but actually it's fished pretty well. The trout thing's always difficult, particularly at this time of year. As I say, I know these dove trout aren't spawning yet. I'm not worried about 
you're fishing on reds or anything like that it's just not happening in fact most of the trout that i've found have been on or near the feed lines which tells you they are really hard on the munch after that big flood it's not a surprise and as i say as long as you just get them back as quickly as you can you're really having no ill effects for my first grayling session of the season i'm pretty happy i didn't even need to use that indicator rod at all i always have that with me just in case they're in the slower deeper water the stuff where you're an infant isn't always that effective but actually through a mixture of these fish being on the munch after the flood and i really do think uh, also that hatch mattered these fish have been in the slacks just off the feed lines on and around I haven't needed to do any indicator fishing that french leader fished at range has just been really effective today didn't need to change too much didn't need to change the outfit didn't need to change the flies either i've basically fished the same two droppers for almost the entire day between that baby pink bead and the orange collar hairs here they've done almost all of the leg work uh, mixed on the point fly of that 3.8 mil soft pink tag and the four mil green point fly they have done the business every single fly i've tied on today pretty much has caught fish as ever please don't forget all the flies that i've used today are available in our grayling outfits there's a clear water and a colored water box to suit the water you're likely to be fishing and also actually the french leader setup that i've been using the leader the indicator all of the stuff on the head it's all available in our urine infant in the box kit which will get you set up just in time for your winter grayling fishing i've got to go and get cracking now because i've got some work to do although having said that i do now have a vlog that needs editing so maybe i could get out of doing those accounts for another day at least sorry john guys thank you very much for watching this video as always we really appreciate it don't forget to give it a like if you've got any mates who you think might enjoy it if people getting into grayling fishing or people getting into urine infant please do share it with them it really helps us get the videos out to more people i got a dash but ib and i will see you guys again for soon some more grayling fishing urine infant and hopefully no more flood water conditions take care folks bye bye